in this video here we're putting in a saddle seat I'm just going to show you all the very first of the rough end part where we're just kind of getting that seat around this particular swell here this is an Olin Young tree very close to the uh, style of tree that we use a lot but my pattern I never really trust it so I always kind of leave that hole cut a little wild So here we're just centering it up. I do have some center marks on the front and the back end of that blocked in seat. And we're just kind of fitting it in there and getting it as close as we can to center. And I always kind of pull that seat down just a little bit so that it's kind of out of my way. And it kind of, the seat will want to form downward. And that back end of that seat will kind of stay out of my way and won't be flipping towards me. And we're going to put our strap over this on our drawdown and go ahead and pull it in. I want to pull it in. That way it takes all the stretch out of it and gets it formed down in the in the dish and, and around there on, on that tree so it's nice and tight. And as you can see, we've got quite a bit of extra around the swell. It's always better to have more than not enough. And I'm just kind of checking my center marks to make sure that overall that seat's centered up on the tree and you see there I'm moving it over just a little bit kind of get it back where we need it so now I'm gonna take a pencil and I'm just kind of looking at the swell and just pulling that up just a little bit and kind of seeing where the base of that swell is and I'm gonna cut this a little close or a little further away than I normally would as far as from where it needs to be because that seat's going to draw some as it dries. So I want to get it as close as possible, but I want to leave myself a little bit of relief around that swell. I can always come back in after it's dry and cut off a little bit more, trim it to where it fits really, really perfect around the swell. And I'm not too worried about the handhold at this moment. We just kind of get it, get it kind of close main thing on this is the the amount of seat that's coming up the side of the swells i'm trying to get it down to where it'll go all the way around and all the way to the front and lay nice and flat so i'm just cutting a little bit of time for me the trick on this too is to trim a lot off the back and don't worry about the front as you come around that swell a little bit as you can see i'm trimming out the back side of the swell but coming and leaving the front alone because that front's going to push forward as it gets clearance off the back it's going to come forward so you thinking well i need to cut this much off so it'll go around the front of the swell usually you'll end up cutting too much off um, by the time it makes its its journey around there a little bit so always just kind of be be a little tender there be a little careful not to cut too much off just mainly work it work the back side and kind of work your way around and as you can see it's already laying down and how far that i didn't cut hardly anything off the front of that hole and it's pretty well far forward so now we're going to trim some of that off and get it a little bit closer um, and as you go around there you can kind of see where you need to trim that that seat is really wet so I'm just using a little razor blade um, and it cuts that leather really really easily and I can be real careful and make small little cuts and not be too worried about overcutting or, or slipping through since that leather is nice and cased well and now that seat's laying nice and flat it's really tight around there um, like I said, it may not be exactly where I want it, but I can always trim a little more off and get that hole around the swell or that, that cut around the swell a lot cleaner and stuff once that leather's dried uh, dried and had time to kind of set up because that leather's going to draw. So as you can see here, like I said, I've got quite a bit there in the front, but we're not going to worry about that too much right now. I've got it close enough where we can pull it in, um, thorn it down, and call it good and let it dry. That's our main goal here is just trying to get it to where the front ends where it wants to be and as you can see I haven't cut the ears yet I always cut the ears after I've got my front um, I want the front tacked up and in position where it's supposed to be before I cut the ears and so we'll talk about ears in another video that gets a little bit more more into it but once I get one side done then I'm just gonna put it on the bench and I'm just gonna flop it over I'm using my center marks that I do have that that came off my, when I'm patterned out this piece of leather I put two little center marks one in the front by the handhold and one in the back and that way I know exactly where the center is and that's why I'm real adamant about making sure that they're centered on the tree because this is where it comes in into here because now we're just going to fold it in half 
and, that, and go ahead and trace off the side we cut to the other side. Now your trees aren't going to be exactly perfect. Um, every tree maker, that tree is going to have a little variation from one side to the other, but we can trust since we left it a little bit wild that it's going to work pretty well. And so we can cut that, make that line and cut that. So as you can see there, we've got a nice line there that should match the other side, which should be very close. And so then we'll, once we cut that, we'll put that back in the tree, go ahead and pull it down. It should kind of want to set where it, where it was originally. Uh, we don't have any lineup nails yet or anything like that, so you're just going to have to eyeball it and see see where it goes. And it, you should be able to tell. Um, how, make sure you're far, far enough forward and, and centered up and even with that little handhold cut it kind of gives you an, a point of reference there to make sure that it's centered and then once I've got it about where I want it I'm going to go ahead and put my strap on it check for center again and then go ahead and pull it back in I want to pull it in every time so that it pulls any any wanted stretch or anything out of that seat so it's down as far as it's going to go and all the slack is out from the actual seating area of the saddle and then you can check to make sure that those that seat's not dropped down too far off the swells and all that. And just kind of rub it in and make sure you're where you want to be checking all the way around there. And as we do that, make sure it's where we want it. It's nice and flat. There's no bubbles underneath my strap. Um, sometimes that leather will try to bubble up um, underneath there, which you can put some sheepskin or something underneath there to kind of tighten it up if you want to. To get any kind of bubbles or dips out of your out of your seat jockey but I just kind of rub that around the swell a little bit get it trained get it kind of smoothed out and then once I've got that I'm gonna go ahead and put four nails I'm gonna put one where the around where the swell screw will go like I said kind of want to be you want to have that as close to where the the final screw will go or concho but um, again you can kind of shift that a little bit to make sure it's centered but I'm gonna check to make sure I've got it pretty dang close where it's supposed to be and then we'll put tacks in the front too where your front keepers would go and that's going to hold everything around the front of that swell as it dries so that as it's trying to draw and everything it doesn't draw on us too much it's still going to shrink some so you'll see from your original pull in line around your swell you can always kind of see a little bit of variance of how much that leather has drawn after it's dried So as I'm putting, putting them nails in there, I usually try to pull that that front top of that seat jockey, kind of pull it up to, to the swell there to where it kind of puts a little bit of tension in the front jockey of that seat. And that way when it dries, it'll be nice and tight and you won't have a bunch of slack underneath there. And I'm just checking for center just to kind of make sure that I'm fairly close to where the nail is on the other side because like I said you have to cover those holes with a swell screw or with your concho or something like that whenever you're done And I don't put all these, I don't put these nails in all the way. You can also take a hole of leather, just like a round piece of round leather and poke a hole in the middle of it. And then you could, if you wanted to, you could nail that nail, use it as a washer and you could nail it down all the way if you wanted to. But, but anyhow, that's how I get the front of the seat put in. Um, if you got any questions or anything, shoot me an email. Hope the video was helpful. Um, hope you could see enough. We'll try to do some more. Like I said, we're going to do the next video. We'll be showing how we did the ears and showing how we cut that i've got a little way of how i how i kind of go about doing that but anyway thank y'all for watching and uh subscribe to our channel and if you do get a chance uh subscribe to our mailing list too at dgsaddlery.com and that way we can send you any new information that we might have and new stuff going on with the shop thank you very much